Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create a simple resource gatherer AI. Let's get started. So here's my scene. I have a unit in here, a gold node here, and a storage area here. The goal is for the unit to go towards the gold node, play an animation, carry the gold to the storage, and drop it. So let's go and see the code that I already have in here. I have a basic game handler script. It's not doing anything, it's completely empty. And I have a unit interface which contains all the functions necessary to implement our AI. As you can see, I can tell the unit to move to a certain position, I can tell it to play the mining animation, and I can test if the unit is idle. So, let's make our gatherer AI script. In our scripts folder, make a new c -sharp script and name it gatherer AI. So in here, let's start off simple. We're going to add some fields to store the gold node and storage transform. So let's make a serialized field private transform for the gold node transform and make another one for the storage transform. On our private void awake, let's first grab the reference to our unit. So let's go up here, make a private i unit unit. This is the interface that contains the functions we need. So the unit is on the game object dot get component of i unit. This game object contains a component which implements this interface. So now that we have a reference to the unit interface, to the goal node transform and the storage transform, let's make some very basic AI. We're going to first go into our unit and move him towards our goal node transform dot position. We're going to stop within 10 units. And when he arrives there, he's going to execute an action. That action is going to trigger when he arrives at the goal node transform. So the action we want is to play the mining animation. He's going to play the animation looking at the gold node transform dot position. And when the animation is completed, it's going to trigger this action. And this action will move the unit towards our storage transform dot position. Okay, so we are moving our unit towards the gold node transform. When we get there, we trigger this action, which plays the mining animation. When the mining animation is completed, it triggers this action. And in this action, he's going to move towards the storage transform position. And when he gets there, he's not going to do anything else. So let's see if all of that is working correctly. First, I'm going to go into my unit and add the gatherer AI. This script up here is the script which implements our interface. And let's drag the storage transform in here and the gold node transform. Okay, let's test. Okay, there he is, goes towards the mine, plays the animation, and moves towards the storage. Okay, great. So that's the core of the behavior that we want to create. So now let's make the gatherer more adaptable. So let's first go into our script here, and instead of having the gold node and storage transform in here, I'm going to remove it from here and place it on the game handler. So the gatherer AI by itself will not have those references. Instead, the gatherer will ask for those references when he needs it. We're going to have a private enum for our state and a private state to store our current state. Now for all the valid states that this AI can be in, let's say it's idle, moving to resource node, gathering resources, and moving to storage. By default on awake, we start at state.idle. Let's comment out this code. So on the private void update, we're going to do a switch on our state and execute different logic depending on the state. So first of all, case state.idle. On idle, let's look for a nearby resource node. In order to do that, we're going to ask the game handler to give us the closest resource. So let's first go into our game handler. And here we want to make a function to return the closest resource. So in here, we're going to do a public transform get resource node. And this is simply going to return our gold node transform. Now, in order to make things easier, let's make this static so we can access this function using the class name. So let's go up here, make a private static game handler for the instance. On our awake, let's set the instance. Let's make this private and make a public static transform get resource node static. And this will go into the instance and return get resource node. All right, so we can access this function, which will return our goal node transform. So this function is what we're going to call in here. 
We're going to go into game handler dot get resource node. Let's store it as a member variable. So go up here, private transform resource node transform. And that's what we're going to store. After we store the resource node, let's set the state to state dot moving to resource node. And down here, case state dot moving to resource node. Let's first test if our unit is idle. So if unit dot is idle, then let's move him towards the resource node. Unit dot move to our resource node transform dot position. Let's stop within 10 units. And when you arrive there, let's set the state to state dot gathering resources. Okay, so now on state dot gathering resources, if the unit dot is idle, we want to do unit dot play animation to mine. Going to look towards our resource node transform dot position. And when the animation is complete, Let's increase a variable to store the gold amount that this unit is carrying. So let's do gold inventory amount plus plus, and that's what we're going to store up here. So private int gold inventory amount. So in here, after we test for idle, if the gold inventory amount is bigger than zero, then we're already carrying something. So in here, we're going to move to storage. If not, if this is the first time when we are carrying zero, then let's gather resources. So in here, again, we are going to request the game handler to give us the storage position. So we're going to have a transform for the storage transform, and we're going to go into game handler, and we need to create a function called get storage static. Let's make that now. Go down here and make a public static transform get storage static and we're going to return instance dot get storage and let's go up here make a private transform get storage and we're simply going to return the storage transform all right so in our gather ai let's set the state equals state dot moving to storage and when moving to storage we're going to do something similar to in here instead of moving towards the resource node we move toward the storage and when we get there we reset back to idle so this is move to storage and let's store the storage transform up here. And of course, when we arrive, we also set the gold inventory amount to zero. All right, so let's see how our logic is set up. So the gatherer first starts off at idle. When he's idle, he searches for a nearby resource node. He asks the game handler to give him that. When he gets a resource, he sets the state to moving towards that resource. If the unit is idle, he's gonna to move towards that resource node. When he gets there, he's going to swap the state to gathering resources. If he's in state gathering resources, first he tests if he's idle. If he already has gold in his inventory, then he's going to move to the storage. If not, he's going to play an animation. When the animation is complete, he's going to increase the gold inventory amount, which on the next update, he's going to run the same thing and move towards the storage. And moving towards the storage, he tests if he's idle, he moves towards that storage position. When he gets there, he resets the gold inventory amount and resets the state back to idle, starting the whole thing over again. So let's see if all of that is working. So here he is, goes to the gold node, mines it, goes towards the storage, drops it, and again goes back to the node, mines it, drops it, and so on. Okay, great. So we have a simple resource gatherer AI. Let's do a quick test with multiple resource nodes to see if the code is working with any resource node we give it. Let's make two more gold nodes. Put one in here and one in here. Let's add references in our game handler. So gold node two and three. And on the get resource node, let's return a random one. So let's make, put them all in a list and return a random one. All right, so let's see if he's going to all the nodes. Okay, he's going to that one, mines it, goes to storage. Okay, he's going to another one, and yep, it's working. So there you have it. We created some basic AI structure for a resource gatherer. In the next video, we're going to keep track of all our resource amounts. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.